Hello, welcome back to U.S. Carb Clinic. I am Dr. Hugh, your host. Glad you could join us again for episode 17. Wow, can't believe we're up to 17. Feels like 44. But then again, I don't know how 44 feels. I've never been there, but still great to be here. Um, of course, please like us on YouTube, Facebook. You get tired of hearing that. I get tired of saying it. Kind of reminds me of uh, my in-laws, my father-in-law. My mother-in-law said, I get tired of making you sandwiches for your lunch. He says, not as tired as I get of eating them. So please like us on fake, fake book and YouTube. <laughs> it is kind of fake book, ain't it? Uh, so again, we're live. And of course, when it's live, you make bloopers. And that's what practical jokes are all about. Uh, but one thing is not a practical joke is today's uh, news about the Hurricane Harvey. It's kind of a, a backhand sweep into Texas. Sorry for the folks in Texas. They get pounded a lot by these things. And uh, we know you folks are feeling it. We're getting a lot of orders for next day air, UPS. And uh, so far we're 100% we're on shipment. So if you need anything, uh, we, can, we can take care of you. So. Uh, we're sorry about what you might be uh, going through. We hear it's up to a, maybe a category three. So anyway, uh, we're with you. We are with you. So anyway, um, moving on to other business. I debunked the junk. I didn't find anything again this week that I wanted to debunk. I didn't want to go over old junk because <laughs> that'd be like being married. So I just wanted to uh, skip over that one and move right on to, I guess, the star of our show today. And of course, before I move on, the whole thing we're here live because it's so easy to pre-record this stuff and and edit it and and have something uh, <clears throat> more polished is the fact that you can text us your questions during the show facebook youtube and uh, we'll answer them live on the air and uh hey and if you have any suggestions for the show other than you know don't do it anymore uh we'd love to hear it so you know sometimes uh, uh, customers say, hey, if you only did this every week or if you only did that, we could do that. We have some things coming up we, we think you'll enjoy. We're going to get into some, some uh, troubleshooting of the actual engine regulator because the engine regulators are, uh, most people don't understand them. I did the junk last week about someone claiming they shut off and turn on so many times per minute that it can damage them. Eh, that's, no. Uh, that's just not true. So anyway, uh, this week we're going to be talking about the Predator 2000, which is uh, actually a very nice unit. Uh, we're a Yamaha dealer, and it does hurt to say that you can buy a unit that's less money and performs very well. But something surprising came out of this week's conversion, not conversion, adaptation, snorkelation. When we snorkelize this thing, something you... You know, the best things sometimes are the things you don't plan for or don't try to get. And uh, just like when we did the, uh, the thing about the 20 pound cylinders that they don't really have 20 pounds anymore. Almost everyone puts only 15 pounds in there. That went viral. We didn't expect that. We just were trying to share some information. But uh, this thing actually did something that we didn't expect. So it is, uh, we tried to edit it down. It is a 10 minute video. So if you want to go to the restroom, come back, go get a sandwich, get married, whatever you want to do, come back 10 minutes if you don't want to watch the video about the Predator uh, 2000. But it is pretty interesting to watch. So uh, we're going to roll that right now. And should I tell them ahead of time or afterwards about the other thing that came out from doing the, doing the, uh, the video on this about the uh, verses? Okay. We, we've been asked several times, please do the test gasoline versus propane. Well, that's another thing that accidentally came out when we did this that we didn't expect. So uh, it wasn't intended, but you'll see the results of it. So let's go ahead and roll the film. Hello, I'm Dr. Hugh, and we're going to snorkelize this Predator 2000 today. I have a lot of respect for the Predator generator from Harbor Freight. Uh, Hello, I'm you, and we're going to snorkelize this Predator 2000 today. I have a lot of respect for the Predator generator from Harbor Freight. Uh, actually, it's 
to me, it's the best made Chinese clone that I've seen. You know, I invented the word Chanda back in year 2001, and uh, I've seen a lot of bad ones, but this, they really have a nice motor. So we're going to start unboxing this thing. She's fresh out of the box, so of course we have to run it for two hours uh, on gasoline. Uh, that makes sure that the rings have seated and also make sure the thing works correctly. I mean, you hate to snorkelize it and find out it didn't work correctly, but it is true. You have to run them on gasoline uh, before you can snorkelize them. Now, I mentioned earlier that this, about the Chandas, this is actually a Chamaha. Chamaha. It's a Yamaha copy. And uh, you, can, you can tell right away by the tail end of it. Yeah. But uh, the snorkel that you use on this is the same one we use for the Yamaha 2000 uh, inverter. So um, we're going to take it outside, put some gas in it, put a little load on it, and come back in a couple hours. Welcome outside where it's a million degrees. We, we all put on our shades and our hats because it's brutal out here. However, we don't run this thing inside on gasoline. So we're going to start it up. Sean's going to get us going here. We're going to move it. Let's go ahead and do that. Move it to starting. Uh, we got our gas cap open like we're supposed to or idle switch is zero. Binary zero one. And we're ready to pull. Let's see how many strokes it takes. Hey, first pull. I like it. They say to wait on the output light, 66 decibels, this sounds about right. We're going to use a reliant meter to show the wattage. This is a 2000, but as you know, it's not really a 2000 per se, it's a 1600 running. We're going to, we went through all our blow dryers and we came up with one that's around 1680. Should be no problem for this unit. So we're going to put that on there. Showing zero. All right. Can you see that? All right. So. We're going to break it in under half load, so go ahead and put it on low speed. There's no reason to put it under full load. It's under low speed, is pulling 400 watts. So we're going to let it sit out here for a couple hours. And, uh, and if it doesn't melt, and the blow dryer doesn't melt, and we don't melt, we'll come back and get it after it runs out of gasoline. All right, we're back inside. We ran it out of gasoline. And now we've installed our gasoline petcock in line because of the intrinsic valve that shuts off the gasoline and the spark at the same time. You can see how we've uh, added it to the spark plug access hole. That way you can move it to change the spark plug and it's still easily accessible to turn on and off for alternative fuel or gasoline operation. Well, first we're going to use our U.S. Carburation special mounting bracket to uh, mount the regulator to the tail end of the generator. So uh, we're also adding our uh, thread sealant to all the fittings. And of course not the calibrator itself. The uh, stainless steel nut and bolt that never gets sealant. So then we add a few washers to the bottom just to make the um, heat shield a little more effective. There's an access cover for the spark plug, change spark plug at the top, because this is an air sealed cabinet. So we opted to remove that completely and we provided a new one in the system 
package that uh, is pre-drilled to allow the smokel tube uh, feed line to pass through. And so you, you would pass the, obviously, the non-snorkel end through the hole from inside out. And uh, now we're popping it back off because we're going to be adding some uh, tachometer wires to the same cover. And when you see it, you'll notice it has three holes in it. One for the tube and two for the tachometer. And so now we're finishing adding our uh, tachometer to the unit. It has, there's, there's dual plates on it. You can mount the tach on left or the right side, turn it whatever direction you want. The holes are already there, self-tapping screws, and there you go. It's nice to have a tack. You know what's going on with the machine. We're routing our wires, routing our, we're getting all tangled up, of course, because you get two wires anywhere near each other, they're going to get hooked on something or around something. So pass them through, get them through a cover. And so now we're, we're through there. Now we've removed the nuts that hold the air horn onto the carburetor. And the tubing was popped loose to make that easier as well. Get that all out of the way. Now, slip the probe in past the choke plate, which is open, of course, like always. And the, uh, the rubber will slip right over the studs. We opted to leave the original OEM gasket on there. You can leave it on, take it off, doesn't matter. Now you put the uh, air horn back on there with the, the original OEM nuts and pop the hose back on. And now the snorkel is on board and ready for operation. The hose can be cut to length if it's too long for you. We found it to be just perfect. But we give you wire ties, you can wire tie the, the tack wires to the tubing. Running our wires for the tack. There's one that goes on the spark plug and one that grounds. Down inside, we're wrapping the spark plug wire four or five times and a wire tie. So we're bringing it inside. We give you a little horseshoe type electrical connector to slip underneath that ground nut. Now what's interesting, there's a tapped hole in the bracket inside right above the unit ground, right below the green wire, green yellow. Above that was a pre-tapped hole. So we give you a screw in there to put on that horseshoe fitting for the wire and just screw it right in that hole and you got a ground. And now we put our cover back on, put our screws back in. And now we're going to connect our fuel supply up, which is of course three quarter inch, three eighths flare. You can put a quick disconnect, you can do whatever you want right here, but we're just doing the basic NPSK six, to six foot hose with all the fittings you need to hook to a, a cylinder. Uh, here's the tack installed. Because we just hooked our tubing up, uh, gas lines is all have air in it. We primed it a few seconds and off it ran. Still has some residuals in it. Got a little gasoline residual. overload but it's still running. So go ahead, take it down. So we can safely, I mean we can overload it, it keeps running on propane. The gasoline, it couldn't even handle the overload. One more time for fun. Alright, we don't want to hurt 
start the machine. Put on the echo mode. Well, so it's still putting out wattage on echo mode. Is that sweet? And guess what? We're all breathing and we're not dying in here. There you go. Snorkelized. Ah, I love it when they run so good on propane. You can see on gasoline, the thing couldn't even handle a load, full load for any period of time. Get your motor snorkel, put it on your generator, hook up your propane or your natural gas. Yeah, I'm going to make some power, hook up some lights or my TV. Got to hit the mute button. Yeah, because I had 10 minutes, I already seen it, so I don't, I don't watch it. But uh, what'd you think of that? It's pretty awesome how, how it did. A few things I wanted to mention. Uh, customers have been asking about the bracket. We do have our own custom made bracket for holding the regulator. And um, if you couldn't tell very well in the video, it's designed for the regulator to sit right there it gives you room to prime it in the back and has the two tabs for mounting your engine regulator uh, engine regulator now you got that down there for your tachometer and go on this side or the other side whichever one you like you see the holes are pre-drilled we have self-drilling screws that go in there so and it has multiple holes uh, these holes match most of the yamahas uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the different panels it, it matches it uh, it can also be drilled and put on the side of your machine. And you don't even have to use the bracket at all. Uh, it can just, you can just, we have standoffs that come in the kit that you can just mount it to the side of the, side of the, the case if you want to. So uh, you can do that as well. Why does it seem like that thing is pointing over in the wrong direction? There we go. Things happen when you're off the air. Also wanted to mention, uh, the device you saw in the, hey, it's all backwards, isn't it? Because I had you flip the video, ha <laughs> uh, ha. But this is the unit that monitors uh, the AC voltage on 120. It's got a three prong plug in the back. We sell these, they're a Yamaha product. We sell them for around 40 bucks. I want one great to have. If you ever have a concern about a, a device. I don't know how many customers have solved a problem because they put that thing on and found out that they're, whatever they were using was pulling too many, too many amps. All right. Hey, Dr. Uh, yeah. You mentioned that uh, the, the Predator video is going to be on uh, YouTube and Facebook as a standalone later. So if anyone wants to refer others, of course, they can always watch the full right. Dr. U episode. Yeah. If somebody gets, yeah. Anybody wants to see it, just bust it out. We're gonna, we usually break out these, uh, these segments. And so the, this unit will be on its own on YouTube and on Facebook. So if anyone just wants to watch the, uh, the snorkelizing of a Predator 2000, it'll be available. When's that gonna be on there? Tonight. Sometime this week. <laughs> Should be on there tonight, hopefully. All right. Um, and one last thing I wanted to mention, if you do this with the bracket or make your own, of course, if you picked up on it, you'll notice we used the original factory mounting holes that were used for this plate here. Uh, we removed, which is easily put back on the original spark plug cover because this is a, a, a sealed box. This is designed for perfect airflow. Uh, so uh, for cooling and so forth. And um, so we didn't drill any holes in this unit whatsoever. You can grab the camera and come close. Nah, you don't have to do that. Okay. No, I just fixed the camera. Are you gonna bring it over here? Pick up the generator and bring it over there. That's good. But, uh, oh, you can move the camera if you want. I'm not gonna, yeah, let me move it. That way I can put it back where I want it. You want the camera? What do you want it to look at? You're talking about the spark plug holes and the brackets and all that. All right, here's, Here's what we went through for the, that was just a blank cap. And so we send you a new cap with the three holes. You can pass the fuel line for the uh, snorkel out of the cabinet to the engine regulator. 
Can you keep it live so I can watch it? I don't know what I'm doing. There you go, engine regulator, because I got a lot of junk back there. And so we also used the original, there my cue card, uh, the original mounting holes. Now, some may question, it's gonna get a little hairy here. There we go, I like that. Here's the exhaust right here, all right? Now, you say, oh, you, this guy's nuts. He put it right over the exhaust. Well, you'll notice we added a couple washers here, and believe it or not, that really uh, enhances the ability of this plate to be a, a heat shield. And one last thing for all the experts. Oh, you still can't do that. If you'll notice right here, if I can get in close to, yeah, see right in here, there is plastic above the exhaust. This is the muffler right here, see? And there's plastic all up in here. So if there's going to be any effect of heat, it would be affecting this plastic long before it affected this plate. And finally, while we ran it, we put our hands on it and feeling it. Say, oh, man, this thing is cool as a cucumber. So you like those sayings, don't you? It ran like a kitten. No, wait a minute, kitty. What was that one? Purred like a kitten. There you go. Purred like a kitten. Cool as a cucumber. Yes. So anyway, uh, and as I was mentioning about the mounting brackets, here is the, uh, could you please keep it real time so I can see what's going on? There you go. There's the engine tack on top of the unit uh, mounted so you can see it. So anything else you want to show about that? No, we're good. All right. So I can put my camera back. I'm going to make these people dizzy. You make me dizzy. See, I know how to set my camera up. Sean don't know how to do it. All right. How we look? There we go. So anyway, that's the Predator. Here's my cue card. All right. So we took care of that. Let's uh, now move on to. Did I mention the fact that it's, uh, I don't think I mentioned the million points I was trying to make before you had me move the camera? Because we did that, you can remove all this, and there's zero footprint. You would, no one would ever know that the snorkel was added to the unit and removed. That's just the beauty of the snorkel. It, it is not a conversion. It is just simply added on as an accessory to allow you to run propane or natural gas. You're not converting it. It's not like, you know, some swimmers that got converted. You know, they can't go back now. I mean, they're converted. So anyway, that being the point, we're now going to move on to customer mail. And this is one of those where I don't have a copy of it. My clipboard is empty. So uh, let's go to the customer mail. What do we have? I love these moments. Ah, yeah, that's pretty. I remember that carburetor. You want me just to talk about this car? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I think Sean should tell it. Sean, what was the story on this carburetor? Come over here. Come over here. I can't hear you. What? Come over here. Can you hear him? So, okay. Yep. So we tore it apart and we found all of this, I guess you'd call it sugar. <laughs> I guess you'd call it sugar. Wow, isn't that terrible? All right, look at that. That is, you can't deny that sugar. That's just, man, you can put that on your oatmeal, man. That's So anyway, that brings up actually something I was going to debunk. Uh, I remember now. Uh, you can buy stuff that is called stabilizer. And I actually looked it up. All right, to stabilize, stabilizer, let me go to my phone here. Stabilizer, a, a substance that prevents the breakdown of emulsions, especially in foods and plants. I'm sorry, paints, foods and paints. Doesn't say anything about fuel. All right, so. This is Dr. Hughes' personal take on stabilizer products. We have gotten, have received hundreds of carburetors to be drilled and turned into dedicated propane natural gas carburetors, and they have that stuff in them. And this is what I deduce from all that. I cannot confirm nor deny that the product will stabilize gasoline. It's, it's rated that way. 
Okay. But think about it. 15% of the fuel people are buying and putting in their machines is not gasoline. Can you stabilize that stuff? Well, apparently by the pictures, no. So that's why people who still, who use stabilizers still have issues with the fuel in their carburetors gumming up their carburetors. So you heard it here first. Stabilizer, in my humble opinion, will not stabilize sugar. And do we have the picture? Eh, we don't need to show the picture again. But anyway, we showed before about how when you add, you know, 85, uh, you know, 10 percent ethanol to your fuel, you're adding sugar to the gas tank. Oh, yeah, there it is. We love that picture. But yeah, that's what was in the bottom of that carburetor. It just it's not meant to be there and it gums it up. And the smaller the engine, the worse it is. So if you can buy ethanol free, then you should be OK. But if you can go propane, natural gas, that's the way to go. All right. So that was, we just got that carburetor in as, the other day. So we thought, hey, it'd be nice to take a picture of that. All right. What else we have? I'm having trouble getting my generator to cold start on propane. Any advice? All right. Well, see, that leaves a lot of questions open. Cold start on propane. That means after it's started, it will run them. It can restart. I would suppose a cold start on propane I would be concerned if it's getting too much prime some customers feel that they need to prime it they hear it going Psh, and they feel oh I need to do that and get some good amount of gas in there once the sit if you saw the video we just did once the system has been cleared of air it takes very little if not zero prime sometimes you can pull the choke a little bit a little bit and not even have to prime it. Most often, if they won't start, they're flooded. And so if you can smell propane at all or natural gas, uh, it's flooded, guaranteed. Turn the ignition off, pump it a few more times, get, get the air fuel out of the system. And then if it's electric start, start cranking and then turn on the fuel. And that should take care of the issue if it is flooding. So the first, my first guess would be that it's flooding. If it's not flooding, what you can do on a cold start is two other things. You can tighten up the spark gap. But again, the question comes up, how old is the engine? Or is the valve lash good? Let's assuming all that's good. You can go to a lighter weight motor oil, uh, 5W30 instead of 10W30, which will, if it's a pull start, see, it didn't, that wasn't in the question either. Is it pull start, electric start? Because when you pull start, you know, as you're pulling it, you're creating the spark. So the harder you pull, the better the spark. So if you tighten up the gap a little bit uh, between those things, it should take care of it. If not, get back with us. We'll try to walk you through some other, other things. So uh, having some of those fill in, uh, answers to some of those questions will help fill in the details. That'll help. Uh, I hope that took care of that. <clears throat> yes. We did just have a question of sorts live from Gary. All right. He says, I thought ethanol was alcohol. And he says, sugar, question mark. Hmm. Yeah, sugar lean. Yeah. Google it. It's really cool. Man, the sugar cane industry is just tickled to death. People are uh, using that stuff. I thought it was mostly corn. Come to find out it's mostly sugar cane. So, yeah, check it out. Um, the chemical breakdown. But it, just like that picture shows, it, uh, <clears throat> just like an old propane tank, it will, odorant is added to propane and there's a quart, there's a pint per 30,000 gallons. If you have an old tank that's boiled off propane for years, there will be residual ethanol at the bottom of the tank. And that's why when old tanks get low, 20%, 15%, we used to get customers call up saying they had a gas leak. And it was simply the fact that the, the propane coming in was so heavy with odorant that it would um, seem like they had a gas leak in the house. So uh, when it comes to, I mean, look, you cannot, that's brown sugar. I mean, I, I feel like busting out in the song, like a carburetor should, oh, should. So anyway, um, Google it. I am not a chemist. I can't speak about all that, but I can tell you it is based on sugar. So uh, yeah, Google it. It's good information. Like I said, I, I thought it was, 
from corn, but come to find out it's mostly sugar cane from what I, from what I Googled. Only one song per episode. <laughs> You're funny. All right, question three. I would like to buy at least a, man, I can't read them. <clears throat> I would like to buy at least a 100-pound tank, as I have heard. The smaller ones can, we just did this. Uh, oh, please. Oh, please. Yeah. Do we need to answer it again? I don't mind answering again. <clears throat> That's the one I said you can take a 100 pounder, you can partly bury it, you can even put mastic on it if you want. All right. This question is more appropriate to do that. Can you get my order out today? I am worried about the approaching hurricane. Absolutely. So far, we are 100%, unless something. it's something freaky, but we are well stocked up on snorkels and uh, accessories we're shipping next day air now sometimes after hurricane ups is the last to come back online sometimes the mail is quicker so uh, we have regional boxes and they're what two days sean yep. so two days uh, if it ships today you know we should have it saturday and that's the other thing about you know mail they deliver Saturday where the other guys don't. Now, maybe in your area they do. I can't say that. I heard they even do someplace on Sunday. So, but By and large, we found that after a hurricane, you get better service from the U.S. mail than uh, UPS. Uh, so they, to answer your question, yes. So far, we have not had an issue getting anyone's order out. And so uh, we are loaded up, but we're firing at 100% because this is what we do. We understand... Real hurricane season doesn't start for another, uh, you know, week. Real hurricane season. So, but you know what? The, the channel's open. The, the path is made. It's, uh, this is going to be an interesting year. If, if we don't get a number one that hits this year, I'd be very surprised because this is the type of year that I've been doing this 20, almost 25 years now, and this is just lining up like they normally do. And uh, so we try to be ahead of the game because we know it, and again, I mentioned it over on several shows. We help out FEMA, uh, National uh, Homeland Security. They've come here and picked up uh, units f from us because they've had blown generators they, that were the economy units. And they picked up uh, Yamahas and uh, keep the phone system working in our even local area. So uh, we're, we try to anticipate hurricane season because we know what it can, it can mean. So we are here to do what we can for you. Let me get back to my cue card. Any other mail? No more mail. Nobody got any questions? Nobody got any suggestions? No? Well, yeah. Well, I guess it will end it then, huh? We'll do an outgo? Isn't that what you call it? An outro. outro. I love outro. That sounds like alto. I can't sing, but uh, yeah, that was whatever. That was kind of wrong of him to leave that silly little uh, get your motors in Oracle. I was just playing around. That's supposed to be off the, off the air. But anyway, he's a good guy. Well, thanks again for joining us. Um, that would be a standalone video also. Uh, no, no, no. You're talking about viral. That'll require a shot. So we appreciate you joining us. Appreciate Sean's help. He's always great behind the scenes. You see him once in a while. Brian, we don't show him at all because... <laughs> anyway, and... Uh, Please like us. I, I missed your finger. Where's your finger? YouTube, Facebook. I like that YouTube, Facebook. Hey, and you put the phone number up too quick. I get to do that. The 1-800. Oh, you are all out of sync, bro. All out of sync. And if you didn't know, hey, before we go, I want to mention, if you didn't notice, I had my Chanda, Chamaha generator hat on. See it? Chamaha. You got to love that. That's my word. I made it up. Chamaha. So if you hear it anywhere else, it's my medical term for generators. So again, like us on YouTube, Facebook, share, do whatever you can. Uh, we're trying to stay in business, take care of our people, take care of our customers. 25 years almost. And uh, so uh, we'll be back next Thursday, 2 o'clock, if all things go well. And again, our, our thoughts and prayers with you folks in, uh, in Texas, in that area, Louisiana. So uh, that's it. See you next time on the Dr. Hugh Show, U.S. Carb Clinic.